During the reign of Queen Marie Antoinette, the Paris Opera was nearly led by a virtuosic Renaissance man, a master violinist and composer. President John Adams called him the most talented man in Europe in horse riding, shooting, fencing, dancing, and music. He was also black, and his story, which was erased from history, is now being told. Take a look. I am putting on a concert. Let us fund the revolution. We cannot afford to make any more enemies. France is changing. You could be more influential than you know. And Kelvin Harrison Jr. from Chevalier. The right? Chevalier de Saint Jean. All right. So tell us, <laughs> thank you, first of all, so much for joining thank us today. Thank you for today. having me. So tell us about Joseph Bologna and why I have never heard of him before. So Joseph Bologna was the son of a slave and a slave owner. And his father saw his potential as a violinist even when he was four years old. And in actuality, in our movie, he's seven. And he brings him to Paris to study at this incredible fencing academy, La Boussia's Academy, in which he becomes the best fencer in Paris at the time and garners the attention of Marie Antoinette and the king and they knight him, the Chevalier de Saint-Georges. Um, Napoleon Bonaparte, though, unfortunately, erased all of his music and his history as he wanted to re-enlist slavery and that is why we have never heard of this guy before. And, and a lot of this movie focuses on his musical prowess. Yes. You play the violin. How were you able to uh, recreate this virtuoso? Yes, it was really hard, <laughs> but luckily my dad is a classical music teacher and um, violin was my first instrument. I started when I was seven years old and I played for a couple years after Hurricane Katrina, the program I was in went away. So I never played again after that. I started playing um, piano and trumpet, but this was the first time I picked it up in a, probably over a decade. And uh, Stephen, really, Stephen Williams, our director, gave me no other choice but to, to really take on the task. So we did five months of training, seven days a week, six hours a day. Um, and that was that was the conservatory style uh, training I did. <laughs> a, a lot of times in, in the classic music world, even today, uh, people of color are often dismissed. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about 200 years ago at the height of uh, the classical music and, and, and the height of, of society really at the time. How was Joseph able to exist and not only exist, but but thrive? Yes, I mean, it took a, a, a strong amount of understanding who you are to an extent, even though he felt like he was lost in the French society and trying to assimilate. But at the same time, I think his mother gave him a strong sense of identity and a, a love that he was able to carry through with him. Now, in the film, we see him rediscovering what that love means to him, what community means to him. But um, we're talking about someone who who he, he, he had all the gifts and all the determination to get what he wanted. He just needed the right, um, the right people to support him. It, tell us, ultimately, though, it was racism that, that took him down? 100%. It was racism that took him down, but it didn't keep him down. You know, he still started the first black regiment of the of the revolution at that time and did many other things, still managed to still compose music after um, the passing of Marie Antoinette, or the beheading of Marie Antoinette. Um, but he did so much and died penniless. What can we learn about Joseph's story? His music is still so singular. Mozart, we find out that Mozart's definitely stole, stolen lines from Joseph's music because of how incredible he was. But this was, a, this was a guy who his father told him at a very young age that no man can tear down an excellent Frenchman, and he did just that. And I think a lot of people of color get told that at a very young age. And, you can't stop them when they're, when they're ready to shoot off. Since you already lived within the world of, of classical music, were you surprised that, that you were not familiar with Joseph? And, and how did you learn about him? Yeah, I was really surprised I didn't know about Joseph, um, especially with my dad being in the classical space. Um, but the first time I read about him was through Stephanie Robinson's script. Um, I, I got the script and I read it and I couldn't believe he was real. At first I thought it was a fictional story about a guy and I was like, this is a great part for me. Um, but then I started to do the research, which was really difficult um, because of everything being erased. And I, I kind of had to go old fashioned and go to JSTOR like when I was in college and look up some scholarly journals and look up the citations and then start to find out where others had researched um, Joseph and how they found these materials um, and that was that was the beginning of my journey into getting to know who this man was. Kelvin Harrison, Jr., thank you so much for being a part of bringing this story to life. I appreciate you talking with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. And you can catch 
Chevalier. Yes. In theaters on Friday, April 21st. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.